yesterday. After one of their 13 touchdowns against SMU, Arlington's Kenny Perry is holding with the snap is high. First he runs, he looks to pass, now he's going to run. Watch this! Through six white shirts, and he makes it. An incredible play by the Lamar High School grad. And you can't ignore the job that Cougar quarterback Andre Ware does. Five touchdowns and 340 yards in one quarter. Six touchdowns and 517 yards in one half. The one half he played. An award to TCU freshman quarterback Leon Clay, who came off the bench to complete 10 of 11 passes and lead TCU to their upset of the Air Force. But it was the Horned Frog defense who really earns the awards by flat shutting down Heisman Trophy candidate. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Welcome to TCU football with head football coach Jim Wacker. Today's show is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas. Coca-Cola Classic, you can't beat the feeling. Radio Shack, the technology store, America's leader in consumer electronics. Blackman Mooring Stomatic, carpet, furniture, drapery, and air duct cleaning. Delta Airlines. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of Texas. Dr. Pepper and TCU, just what the doctor ordered. Jack Williams Auto Mall, Highway 80 at Loop 820 and West Fort Worth. Ashworth Insurance, for your peace of mind, we're always there. TCU would also like to thank the following sponsors for their support. Max Eubank Roofing, Bruce Alford, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, and Southwest Land Title. The Horn Frogs beat a top 20 team and they get a standing ovation from the Horn Frog fans. That is the end of the football game and TCU has definitely proven a point this afternoon. Air Force came in ranked number 19 in the nation and their quarterback D. Dallas was a Heisman Trophy candidate. But after today, he will remember Fort Worth, Texas. The final score, TCU 27, Air Force 9. Stu Dickens split wide left on second down and 12 from the 14-yard line. Short drop for Leon Clay. Ron Giles is in there at quarterback against nationally ranked Air Force. Boy's having a great ball game. He's running, he's throwing, he's doing a great job. And man, what a great touchdown run. He gets us a lead. And all of a sudden, he goes out with a sprained wrist on his throwing hand and a cut finger on the other hand. And now it's all up to number two, Leon Clay, the freshman from Gladewater. Everything else from that point, it's history. Stu Dickens split wide left on second down and 12 from the 14-yard line. Short drop for Leon Clay. Clay rolling. Now he double pumps and fires it downfield. And here is Shipley at the 50-yard line. Let's count it off. He may score 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, TCU. The field is clear of flags, and the Horn Frogs have widened their lead on the Leon Clay to Stephen Shipley touchdown pass for the Horn Frogs. 86 yards. Yeah. Well, it, was a, it was a design rollout to the right, and the play kind of failed at first, and Ship broke down the sideline, and I seen him get behind the guy, and I just threw it down the sideline hoping he'd catch it, and he did. Touchdown. We were trying to trying to get the play out to Shipley, but it was a stop route, and he just took off, and I just threw the ball to him. The amazing thing about this story is that, hey, all of the injuries we've had all year long to some of our best football players, to Tony Dothard, to Fred Washington, and so on, and then we go into the week of practice getting ready to play nationally ranked Air Force, and what happens? On Wednesday, our starting safety, Steve Conley, Goes to make a move on a pass and throws his back out. He can't play at all. On Thursday, Todd Holmes, starting wide receiver. He pulls a muscle, pops a hamstring, and he can't hardly play at all in the ball game. And I mean, it's going from bad to worse. We get into the ball game, and what happens? We lose our starting quarterback, Ron Giles, who was having a great ball game, and we lose our starting A back. Boy, Michael Jackson, and what a great job he's done for us. So again, 
More and more freshmen go into the lineup. More and more young guys have to make it happen. And that's the story in this ball game. That's the amazing thing about Air Force, is that the Horn Frogs kept fighting, kept clawing, kept scratching, and somehow came up with one of the biggest wins since I've been at TCU. Oh, was that a fun, fun victory. <laughs> That way you got a chance to win. Oh, if you think that's our game plan, you're crazy. Our game plan going in was throw it 70% of the time. That's the one chance. We got to outscore them to beat them. Our defense, no way can they hold them, can they contain D. Dallas and that explosive Air Force offense. But what happens early in the game? We give the ball to Tommy Palmer, he breaks for 10. We give it to him again, he breaks for 15. And all of a sudden that game plan goes out the window and we say, hey, if Tommy Palmer can run up and down the field, let's let him run up and down the field. Wow, what a job that young man did, number 32. 177 yards rushing. You talk about a game breaker. He was a man on Saturday. And moving right to left with one setback out of the triple shoot, and that guy, Palmer, gets it at left tackle, and he's out past the 20, 25, 30, 32 yard line. Two receivers split right, Giles looks that way. No, he hands off to Palmer. And Palmer down the middle for a gain near another first down. Shipley and Jackson lined up wide left. Both had good games last week, but the handoff goes to Palmer. Palmer cross bucket the 40 out to the 44-yard line. Three receivers split right. Handoff to Palmer. They keep going at him, and he keeps getting yards. Here's five more. First and goal just outside the six-yard line. Palmer the lone setback, and he's coming right. Inside the five down to the one-yard line. Second and nine, handoff, this time Palmer up the middle. Palmer out past the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, down into Air Force territory at the 45, 40, 38-yard line. Tommy Palmer, he sent Shipley wide to the left side, along with Mike Houston, the freshman from, from Lamarck out there. And on the right side, you'll find Toby Morey with a lone setback, Palmer. And they'll keep it on the ground on first down. Palmer out past the 20 to the 24-5 yard line for a gain of six. Watch out. Frogs have 99 and a half yards to go, and they hand off to Tommy Palmer on first down. He turns it up at the 10, out to the 15, 20, 25, and driven out at the 26-yard line by Pat McNellis. And Tommy Palmer starts it off with a 25-yard run, and TCU is out of danger. because every defensive player that stepped on the field Saturday played. And you know, that's the real story of that ball game. Man alive, the heart and soul of that defense, the way they're coming together. Yeah, Mark Dove and those coaches, they did a great job with the defensive game plan. They took the number one rushing team in the nation, and I mean, we really did an effective job of shutting them down, held them to nine points total. That's a great job. But you know what really makes that work? Players. Players that are aggressive, that are having fun, that are playing with enthusiasm that are pursuing the football, running like crazy to the football, gang tackling, playing physical. That's what the Horned Frogs did Saturday. And if we continue to build on that, we get a chance to be a great defensive football team. Here's a first and 10 at their own 46-yard line, near side the short side, handoff, and Lewis is hammered in the backfield that time. The first man there is Buddy Wyatt, the junior from Denison, Texas, and that is a loss of about three yards, Steve, and that's what you gotta do against Air Force. He has gotten very little up the middle. He got the first down a moment ago on the pitch wide, and here is a second down and about 12, they say, and Dallas options left. He pitches to Chris Howard. Rosie Collins chase him. Collins catches him along with Reggie Campbell, and they lose more yardage out there. Here is a third down, almost 13 yards, between 12 and 13 from the 43-yard line. Far hash mark for the Air Force Falcons and Dallas to throw. Cobble blitzing, misses. Dallas is so quick. He's still on the run, still running, and incomplete as he fires it to the 50-yard line for Steve Sen. But what great pressure coming from the outside by Jason Cobble. Here's a second and four, they say. 
from the 26-yard line. Dallas running for the first time, option right, and dragged down by the jersey to the outside by Richard Booker, the junior from McGregor, short of the first down. First and 10 for the Air Force Falcons. They send a receiver, Steve Sin, wide to the left side. The tight end, Van Holsen, lined up toward the short side of the field as well, and Dallas coming right on the option. Strung out nicely. He pitches, and Galavis almost took it away. The ball loose on the carpet, but Air Force's Ron Gray got it back at the 19, but I'll tell you, Ed Galavis almost took that pitch for TCU and went the other way. Long count here for the Air Force Falcons. Hand off Lewis. Lewis dragged down by Smith, but still on his feet, but not enough for the first down. That's where Arkansas beat him two weeks ago, right up the middle for 444 total yards rushing. Here's a first and 10 from the 47. Hand off to Jones, who is sandwiched and bent over. Boy, Steve made the comment during pregame warm-ups. He is so smooth pitching that football, and he is. And here he pitches left this time on first down. This is Jason Jones, but oh, Jason Jones pays dearly. First and 15 at the 22-yard line for the Air Force Falcons. Out of the wishbone, Dallas options left. Missed by Roosevelt Collins, but strung out and tackled back at the 25 by McWright. The ball's loose. Did they say a fumble? They did, and TCU got it at the 21-yard line. The interesting move here. Only one setback as Air Force lines up in a triple shoot look, but they hand it off to Jason Jones, and the Frogs are not fooled. We did play great defense in the first half, but what about the second half? Hey, the offense comes out, and we're not in sync. Hey, we just can't quite get it together. And uh, all of a sudden, they stop us, and we have to punt, we shank one. Short punt, they have great field position. Defense goes out there, one, two, three, bam, stops them cold. And then offense goes back in again, couple first downs, all of a sudden, boom, another turnover. Boy, Air Force, great field position. Defense comes in again, one, two, three, punt, stuffs them. That kind of football wins football game. Man, how live are our kids playing in the second half? Third down and eight. Ball spotted right between the 39 and the 40-yard line. Middle of the field, and Dallas drops back seven. Now throws the football down the near sideline, but there is Greg Johnson bobbling the football because Robert McWright hit him as he caught the ball, and it falls incomplete, and a punting situation for Air Force. And here is a second down and eight from the 33-yard line. Option coming right. Dallas will keep it himself. He gets past the first guy, but not Roosevelt Collins. Here's a third and four at the 13-yard line. Three minutes to go in the third. Dallas looks right, looks left, now calls the line down and hands off to Lewis. He needed four, maybe got a yard. Straight up the middle, Buddy Wyatt again. Soon to be alumni, Daryl Davis, a senior, is along that defensive line on fourth down and three from the 12. Here's Dallas handing off straight ahead, and it is uh, Rodney Lewis stuck. He faked me out, but he didn't fake TCU out. Lewis hit hard by Davis, short of the first down by a yard, and TCU takes over on down. Third and five. Dallas near midfield, hands off to Jason Jones. He's hit in the backfield, barely regained the line of scrimmage. First and goal. Dallas runs the option, turns up at the five. No! As he was about to turn up at the seven, he is collared down there by TCU's Lavoie Crump again. Third and goal from the 37-yard line. See what Fisher DeBerry has in his playbook for this situation. And Dallas will throw. Straight drop this time. Wings it over the middle, right into the arms of Lavoie Crump at the 20. And Lavoie Crump out to the 25, 30-yard line. And Steve, the Horn Frogs have held Air Force without a touchdown again. And 23,593, most of them TCU fans, are standing for the Horn Frog defense. and signals that's how long the offensive drives were on saturday man alive did they put so together some great great drives first ron giles at the control boy he takes us right down the field and man breaks three tackles on that last run to get in the end zone to give us a lead hey but hey a lot of people played well how about an offensive line hugh Nall, what a great job he's done with those guys you know with mike sullivan and brett alexander you go right on down bill elliott Hey, what about that freshman, Jody Moore? But the guy I'm really proud of, Mike Bullock. 
He has two bad ankles. He has not been able to practice for three weeks. All he does is go and line up on Saturday and play his heart out. Man, they had some great holes, and they dominated on Saturday. We've just got to keep getting better because we're getting good performances from a lot of players. Let's take a look at some of those offensive highlights, okay? Because on Saturday, it was a fun, fun day for the Horned Frogs. Here's a third down and a long two for the Horned Frogs. They fake to Palmer and Giles rolls left. Looking over the middle, has Blackwell open with a cast on his hand. He goes up at the Air Force 45 and brings it down. This is already a 51-yard march. TCU had five drives last week against Rice of over 50 yards. Here now is a second down and 10. Giles in trouble, now scrambles up the middle, past the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Giles first and goal at the four-yard line. Just outside the three, second and goal. Wishbone backfield, double tight ends. Giles wants to option hit at the five. He scrambles away, though. He'll run for the flag stick and gets in with great second effort. Giles broke left, stopped, went back to the right, and scores the touchdown for TCU. First and 10 at the 36. Giles sends two receivers right, but runs the draw play to Motkins. Motkins at the 30, cuts right near the flag stick, got the first down at the 25-yard line, driven out on the Air Force side of the field. They sent two receivers left, or one left and two right, and Clay drops back seven, flips it over the middle to Jackson, caught at the 20 and tackled immediately down there by Gladney again after a gain of four more. They shift Palmer into a slot right, so no one is in the backfield, and the blitz is coming, picked up. Clay stops and pops and has Jackson at the 13, the 10, down to the six-yard line, first down TCU as Michael Jackson, the redshirt freshman from Corpus Christi, makes a nice catch off a pretty good short drop by Leon Clay. First and goal just outside the six-yard line. Palmer the lone set back, and he's coming right inside the five, down to the one-yard line. Here is the second and goal at the one. A lone set back, Tommy Palmer, and Clay will give it to him. Palmer up and over. Touchdown, TCU. Second and nine, handoff, this time Palmer up the middle, Palmer out past the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, down into Air Force territory at the 45, 40, 38 yard line, Tommy Palmer. Stu Dickens split wide left on second down and 12 from the 14 yard line, short drop for Leon Clay. Clay rolling, now he double pumps and fires it downfield and here is Shipley at the 50 yard line. Let's count it off, he may score 15, 10, five, Touchdown, TCU! The field is clear of flags, and the Horned Frogs have widened their lead on the Leon Clay to Stephen Shipley touchdown pass for the Horned Frogs. Palmer's already had a 100-yard game earlier this year, and he has a big one going right now. Here's a short drop and pop over the middle to Michael Houston, and Houston gets five yards on the quick one. Frogs, purple jerseys, purple war bonnets. It's second down and seven from the 40-yard line. Clay in trouble, scrambles and throws and hits Blackwell, who goes up at the midfield stripe to make the catch in a TCU first down. Blackwell, the tight end, lined up left, and Morey wide left. Hand off. Palmer again. Palmer down past the 35-30, run out at the 29-yard line for nine more. No doubt about that. Here's a, from the uh, third down from the 32-yard line. They flip it right. Houston makes the catch near the marker at the 28. Here is a third down and six. Under 11 minutes to go at the Air Force 24. Clay looks right. Now throws it downfield for Shipley. Goes up and caught the football. Touchdown, TCU. 24-yard touchdown pass for the freshman from Lindale. And TCU's Steve Shipley makes it a 26-3 football game. Tell you that Air Force win was a big, 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 big win for us. We needed that one. We needed that kind of confidence because when you have a lot of freshmen, a lot of young players, hey, the one thing they have to do is start believing in themselves and they have to start believing in each other. A lot of young players like Leon Clay and... Mike Houston, they grew up a bunch. Reggie Campbell, all of those freshmen playing and playing and getting better and having fun. That's what football's all about. But now this week, we're back into the Southwest Conference. This week, we have to go to Waco, Texas, play the Baylor Bears at their homecoming. And I'll tell you, we are going to get a test. I know they're coming off a tough loss, really a tough loss with Texas A&M. But I'll tell you this much, they played A&M an awful lot better than we did. 
They are a good, good football team. One of the top defenses in the nation. On offense, of course, they got that great quarterback. He throws the ball all over the field. They've got a great stable of running backs, and we need to put it together once again. Because the team that comes out of this one, a victor, hey, they're going to have an edge. They're still in the race. They're still in the hunt. They still can have a great year. We need to make sure that's the Horned Frogs. And, of course, the Baylor Bears, Grant Taft, they're going to try to do the same thing. We hope you come down there for the ball game. We hope you show up and support the purple and white because we need your backing. We need to see fans in the stands that are excited that are going to back these horned, young Horned Frogs because it's an improving football team, and we hope we get better week after week. Starting this next weekend again for the Baylor Bears. Yeah! 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 Yeah!